Hello, everybody. Hello. So I'm doing this amazing thing with a group of 50 people every morning. And a lesson came out this morning that was so awesome that I wanted to tell you about it tonight. And um, I wanted to connect with you guys uh, on it because I felt like it was such great information. And I thought that tonight we would have kind of a combination of a little bit of meditation with this lesson. In fact, we're gonna kind of put them together. And what the things are that we learned from today's call was <clears throat> that on one level, there's a consciousness that we live in that has a question all day. In fact, we ask thousands of questions all day, whether it's like, why do I always do this? Why me? Why can't I get over this? What am I trying to get to right now? What do I do about this situation? What do I do about what those people think of me? And what do I do about this house? What do I do about this relationship or whatever? We have constant questions going on all the time in our body. And what we usually try to do is ask the question and then sometimes we just let the question keep showing up because answering that question would would be a different consciousness. In other words, for you to actually have an answer, you'd have to be at a different consciousness that, than the one that asked the question, right? So there's one consciousness that asks a question, why do I always do this? Or, or, or something like, you know, who am I? Or a question like, what do I do about this relationship? Or, or what do I do about this situation? If you answered that question immediately, you're at the same level of consciousness that asked the question. So it's a waste of time, right? Like if you actually just say, why do I do this? Because I da da da, you're still at that consciousness. But what's fascinating about human beings is there's a you that can ask a question and have a dilemma. And there's a you that has the answer. And our job is to expand our consciousness and connect to the part of you that has the answer. So when you ask space, when you ask the moment, when you ask the universe, when you ask the now, you gotta wait for a minute. Because we have so many questions that we habitually ask all the time. Why do I always do this? Just these questions. But we never ever really actually ask this question in order to get an answer to transcend this issue, right? So imagine instead of just going, why do I always do this? you actually wrote the question down and meditated on it. Imagine the difference between you going, why am I always going through this? Why do I always pick the wrong thing? Why am I blah, blah, blah? And instead of just kind of really quickly asking it to the middle of nowhere and just kind of throwing the stuff out, what would happen if you actually wrote it on a piece of paper and saw your question and actually waited and delegated and allowed an answer to come through? that's bigger than the consciousness that asked the question in the first place. This is really trippy. So I want to offer you to think of a dilemma that you might have had today even, or that you, a question you have right now, what do I do about this thing? What do I do about this? How do I make more money? How do I get people to whatever? And instead of just casually saying it and just being used to the same consciousness, actually being scared of an answer because it would free you of the consciousness that had that question. What if we tonight actually wrote down a few of the questions that we're asking all the time or that you might have right now and actually put it on paper and meditated and allowed ourselves to listen and found an actual answer to the question so we could free ourselves from the question, right? Because there's actually a fear in having some of the answers to the questions we ask. Because if you have the answer to the question, then the part of you that has a dilemma will disappear. And our ego is used to having a dilemma so we can still be the small, separate, illusional self than the true, amazing, magical self that we are, right? There is a you that is magic and there is a you that is in a dilemma. And... Our job is to take a question, put it out, and listen, and actually wait for a while until 
the answer shows up. Now, amazingly, the universe is so cool that it won't always give you the literal answer to the question. Like, do I stay with this person or not? And you, it's not going to go yes or no every time. It might actually give you a higher level answer. It moves like the magic eight ball. You remember that toy? You shake it up and it might be like, you need to meditate more. Or it says, ask another question. Or it says, my sources say yes. Or it might say something in the universe or life might actually answer you with something like, I want you to know you are fine either way. Right? It's, it's actually wanting you to know no matter what, you're fine either way. You might get an answer that's not the direct answer that your ego wanted because you're going to go to a consciousness that's higher than the question was asked at. So there's one level that has the question and you have to be at a consciousness that has an answer. But most of us are scared to expand out of the consciousness that has the question, right? But you can transcend these questions. When you meditate long enough, many of those questions will go away. But who would you be without this problem? Who would you be without this fear? Now, sometimes we ask other people, and that can be great as long as the person is in a consciousness that's more grounded than your level of consciousness that asks the question. Sometimes you might ask someone a question and they might give you advice, but if they're in a fear-based consciousness, they might say, here's why you shouldn't follow your dreams. Here's why, um, here's why it's not that. So it depends on who we're asking, but I got to tell you, there's even more power in asking the space that is right here. There's even more power in asking a tree sometimes. And it's great to have some people that can give you answers, but how much more powerful would life be if you could start the practice of accessing the you that has the answer? Because there is answers, there are answers that exist inside of you. You just have to connect to the consciousness. So I wanna offer everybody, we're gonna do an exercise and combine getting some answers to these questions with some meditation tonight. And I did this this morning with the calls and I have to tell you, it was magical. We had one person on the call who I love so dearly who said he felt anger at someone. I won't get into the whole story, but he was feeling anger at someone. And, and he said um, two questions. One question he asked was, who am I? Right? He asked, who am I? And the other one was something about anger with, if I remember it right, one thing I don't know if it was something he meditated on, but it was a question he definitely had. Why do I have anger towards this person? And as time went on, when he asked the universe, who am I? The answer he got was me. And he said, and I remember on the 630 calls that I'm everyone. And then he also realized, and I'm also you. And I'm also the guy that I'm mad at. Imagine if you could realize the person you're mad at is you. When he really realized there's an answer to the question, who am I? Who am I? You're this space. You're the now, you're the consciousness, you're forgiveness, you're the love that forgives the part of you that's always feeling angry or always feeling guilty or always feeling stuck. And what love, what has the capacity to love the angry, the stuck, the controlling, the judgmental? The universe, love. And if you can access a part of you that can love the part of you that feels angry, then wouldn't that mean you actually have to be the universe? You have to actually be the space? If you could be accessing a place that can see the angry part of you, then who the hell are you? Right? So here's what I want to do. I want to give you a minute or two to write down in a piece, in, in a, on a piece of paper, in a notebook, or with a pen and a paper, whatever. I actually wanna offer you to write it down. I, I might ask you in a little bit, feel free to write it down here also, but I want you to have like a notebook next to you with the question because how freeing, and Christina said, how do I think of a question? Write that one down. <laughs> but how freeing would it be to take these common questions that we ask ourselves and never actually want the answer to and take them and put them down. And I want to offer you really 
allow yourself to have some space with this. If you want to take some moments with yourself, grab some tea, light a candle, and really give yourself permission to access a place in you to find a consciousness that wants to give you an answer, right? But the answer is always there, but we have to move to the channel that can receive the answer because it will be scary to the part of you that has the question to be freed by the answer. So we have to ask ourselves, am I willing? First of all, I wanna ask you, are you willing to actually receive an answer? Because who would you be without that question? Especially if you've had that question a long time. Some people wanna keep a story. They wanna keep a dilemma. They wanna keep a challenge going because who would I be without this dilemma? Who would I be without this problem? Who would I be without this question? Like some of us literally bond with people over our problems. So if I don't have this problem, maybe that friend and I won't be close anymore, right? Some of us feel connection and love in complaining with others about these dilemmas. And that's why I wanna ask you guys, do you feel willing to receive actual freedom, connection, answers so that you can be more in the stage of the, uh, you can be more in the alignment of the answer than the question, right? That's available. So Alma asked, how do I receive the answer to how do I receive? Well, one thing that I've learned is that to actually change, life requires less effort from you. For instance, to really find your emotions for some of us, to really connect to your body. And, and I find for me, I find for me, to be more healthy, right? It's my job to not eat, right? Like have a couple days where I don't eat. Well, that's less effort, right? And people go, God, that's so much work. I'm like, no, it isn't. I'm, I'm not buying food. I'm not wasting plastic bags. I'm not... I'm not going to the restaurants. I'm not feeling guilty. I'm not in this, whatever the thing is, the pattern. I'm not anticipating. I'm saving money, right? And, and, and people, oh, it's so much work. And then you go, wait a minute. We actually have a ton of effort going on right now. We're just so used to it. Like if someone told you, just so you know, part of your life is going to be checking social media 20 to 50 times a day, you'd be like, I don't have time for that. Yet most of us have been doing that for years, right? Right? Most of us have been doing that for years. Like I'm just used to having a lot of stress. I'm used to having a lot of dilemmas. I'm used to having, you know, a lot of information that I don't need right? People's gossip. I, I, I'm used to having all the stuff that I don't need. We actually acquire more effort to block the answers, right? To, to block the answers of the truth in us. We actually acquire, we need to constantly have our mind fed by the news and all the stuff. So to receive, it actually requires less effort, right? People think meditations work, and, and it's not, it's, it's actually the removal of work. It's the removal of effort because I'm not doing anything when I meditate, I just listen. I mean, literally we're sitting here and our ego is so panicked by the idea that I'm supposed to just sit. So it's actually surreal because to receive higher, we have to do less. To really see through our emotional patterns, we have to do less. We have to just not distract ourselves, right? We have to not be in a place where we're constantly filling ourselves and not only our body with things it doesn't want. Like, think of how much our body is trying to process a burrito, Doritos, burgers, Coca Cola, coffee. Our body spends all day trying to process stuff, and 98% of it, it doesn't want. So it's probably one of the reasons we get really tired is because the body is like ugh, constantly 24 hours a day of working. And it turns out sometimes it needs less effort. Well, what if the way you receive true answers is we stop filling our mind with so much effort? We stop filling our minds with so much information. So the first thing we want to do is I want to dare you 
to think of a question. If you could ask whatever, the highest level of consciousness that you can find, if you could ask God, which you can, if you can ask the universe and if you can ask your soul, whatever you want to ask, the highest vibration, if you wanted to ask Abraham Hicks or Bashar or whoever you're, what would a question truly be that you have, right? Or what's a question you ask all day? And it can totally be circumstantial, like what do I do about this place or what do I do about this stuff? Or even if you perceive it as small, just so you know, no question is smaller than any other question. I don't care if you're figuring out if you should move to Ireland or if you should have one more bite of candy. They are the same level of question because if it's a dilemma inside of you, it's a dilemma. So size isn't a thing. As long as the question is something that you, you have. Can you receive that your question is worth asking and you don't need to compare yourself to anyone else? And just, I wanna dare you to allow yourself, no matter what it is, to write down a first question. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna write down a total of four questions. And I wanna offer that the last question is going to be, who am I, right? So the fourth one you can already write down, who am I, right? But before that, I wanna dare you to write down three questions. And I don't care if it's, how do I become famous? What do I do about this? Should I donate the money? Or, you know, more of a, a question like, who am I? Like, you know, what do you want from me? Why am I here? Whatever it is. So go ahead and write down your first question. I'll give you a minute to write down your first question. I'm sure some of you have. <sighs> well, if you have more questions than four, I want to offer you after the call to feel free to keep going. But this is a conscious shifting experiment we're going to do here. Mm, that's a great question, Jesse. How do I not get triggered by judgmental people who think they know me? What a great question because that question honestly takes um, responsibility because he's saying, not you're not saying, how do I get people to stop judging me? You're saying, how do I not get triggered? So I want to work on me not getting triggered. So that's a great question. So go ahead and write that first question down. If you've written that, feel free to ask yourself another one. It could be about what you're doing tonight. It could be about what you're doing tomorrow. It could be a giant life question. What's another one? How do I speak my truth always and compassionately? That's great. That's great. How do I speak my truth always and compassionately? I love that. Beautiful. Beautiful. And remember, some of the answers that the universe or life or this moment or the space might give you might be not the direct answer. It might not say, Sally, you step forward and you <clears throat> get this tone of voice, but it might help you access a worthiness where it's just second nature for you to do that. Do you get what I'm saying? It might, um, okay, so Anne already wrote down six questions. So I would, one thing I already can see an answer to the question, Anne, is you're asking six or seven questions, right? So let's go with one. Why can't I get money? So two could be, why can't I be rich? Three might be, what's wrong with me? And four will be, who am I, right? So you're just gonna do the four. So we don't wanna have 50 questions. You notice that many, many, many questions showing up. Do you notice that the more many, many, many questions show up, the more we can't get the answer to one? It's like, I want a million questions, so I don't actually have to hear an answer to the first one, right? Like when I work with people, sometimes they will ask five or six things and I'm like, hold on, one thing at a time, right? So you're good. that's why I actually really, really care about you not going past four tonight. How do we become uh, a responsible adult, says Heather? How do I find the thing that makes me money? How do I love myself exactly as I am right now? Those are fantastic questions. I love, I love the variety of questions that you're asking, Heather, because because they're, they're not only circumstantial, there's one that's kind of circumstantial, there's one that's a little bit bigger than that, there's one that's just kind of a what am I? So that's great, you get all kinds of different things, right? Is there truly a need for a purpose? This is fantastic. Should I have tantric sex tonight on the phone with a man who I have not met? Great question. 
Daylight, that's a great question. Isn't this great? We're gonna actually ask these questions. Will I die alone? Oh, will I die alone? Kyle, question one, why do my parents uh, are sabotaging my second marriage ceremony in February by not attending because it's uh, not being done in the Catholic church? Great question. Uh, how can I be more productive while staying true to myself in commitments? Oh, 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 right? How do I love the now right now? How do I believe in myself enough to get my books published? Great question. Great question, you guys. How am I holding myself back? Why am I holding myself back? Am I holding myself back? <laughs> Brooke's so awesome. Who am I? Am I holding myself back? I wish the fourth one was back. How am I holding myself back? Why am I holding myself? Am I holding myself back? Back. What's the highest value I can bring to the planet? Oh, why does my body receive trauma before a big change? Oh, I love that. Another, another one, I don't want to kind of adjust your questions too much because I want you guys to find it, but one that shows up for me, Elaine, is does my body have to receive trauma before a big change? Like your habit might say yes, but this space might say no. You just might be used to that, right? So most of your questions, here's a tip already right out of the bat, every, right, out, right out the gate. Uh, most of your questions you'll notice come from your past. Like, why do I always blah, blah, blah? Why can't I make money? The only evidence you have that asks the question is your past, right? Many might still, who am I might not, right? But many questions, questions come from past evidence. And that's really, really big to understand. Questions come from the story of you versus what I believe to be the truth of you, which is much more this moment and not the habitual story, right? So I know you guys have your first question. So here's what we're going to do. <clears throat> we're going to take uh, the first question and we're going to take a breath in. I want you to read the question. And you're going to take a breath in. And you can say either out loud or internally the question. And you're going to do it again. And then say it out loud or internally again, the question. And then a third time, right? So it, like, let's say it's, um, why can't I fall in love, right? So you go just... Why can't I fall in love? You can do it outside or internally, totally your call, right? So your second one, why can't I fall in love? Why can't I fall in love? And then I want you to put the, the notebook with the question open here and I'm going to, we're going to meditate together. We're gonna to listen to the silence and we're going to leave the consciousness that asked that question and make space for a higher vibration to give you an answer. And remember, the answer might not be literal. It might be something that's bigger, like meditate longer than this, or, you know, uh, I want you to be okay with not knowing, right? It might give you something like that. So are you guys ready? Here we go. This is really, really fun. <clears throat> so everyone take a deep breath in and release it and go ahead and read your question so you understand it and you have it in front of you. And then maybe put it in your heart. And if you need to the first time, read it out loud off the paper, that's fine, but breathe in. And on this first exhale, ask this question that you've written down. So it could be, and it can be internally or externally, but go ahead and I'll, I'll do it so you have a clear one here. Take a deep breath in and ask this question internally or externally, go. Now take another breath in and ask this question again. Now take another breath in 
and ask this question again. Now, listen, feel free to close your eyes and I'm gonna watch the time and we're gonna to meditate together and receive an answer that's at a higher level of consciousness than that question. So hold space for the question, but also hold space for an answer that's bigger than that question. So feel free to relax, listen, and go. And I'll watch the time. We're gonna meditate a few minutes right now.
Okay, take a deep breath. Release it. And now take a second and write down something under that question. And it can be, I have no idea. It can be what you feel. It can be freedom. It can be, I don't get this. I just want you to write something down, right? So you have the question and you write down whatever, whether it's what it said, what you're saying with the highest level, the truest level, feeling, whatever, write it down. And before I go forward, I'm gonna ask you if anyone felt an actual answer. Embody your truest, most authentic self. You are already the best version of yourself, freedom and abundance. Wow, some tears in there. Someone said, yes, then I challenged it. That's really interesting because your answer might drive you crazy, but that doesn't make it any less true, right? Your answer might drive you crazy, but that doesn't make it any less true. It might say, like someone said, dump, dump the junk, right? And you might go, but I need the junk, right? Your ego might hate the answer, so you might delay it for a while, but it's trying to take you to a new consciousness that's right and wrong is just an illusion. Beautiful. My mind kept going to a silamar. I think my answer is wait until a silamar. That's interesting. Come from a place of curiosity. Keep growing. Your message will come. Be willing to go where nobody has gone before. What do I want my business to be like? Answer, light and bright. Ah, Joey said I just joined way too late. Joey, check this out from the beginning when we post it, because this is really exciting. I want to dare you all to remember this call, please. And, and we'll put it in the files for you, because every time you have a question, you could do this, right? That's what AEP is for. Like, we have all these videos stacked so you can, can really, like, do these exercises and find yourself, meditations, everything. Heather says, I'm washing the dishes at work, but it said that I have a belief that I didn't get to be a child and that's why I can't be as responsible now. And isn't it beautiful that it said, I have a belief that I didn't get to be a child, right? So it's actually also saying that that's not necessarily even the truth that you didn't get to, it's that you believe you didn't, which is a really fascinating breakthrough if, I, if I'm trans, uh, translating that correctly. Carrie has, tune in and choose what to do in the moment and be okay if you don't get everything done. Oh, that is so good. Tune in and choose what to do in the moment and be okay if you don't get everything done. Answer, you aren't fearing failure, but you're fearing success. Move beyond limiting beliefs, right? My home is where my heart is. Trust yourself, show up. Don't name the feeling, make up its own name and allow that to be. Um, question, why do I settle for less when I know that I can achieve so much more? My answer was Scrabble. <laughs> wow, why do I settle for less when I know that I can achieve so much more? My answer was Scrabble, love to play it, uh oh, it Oh shit, move me. Okay, love to play it, but others stop playing with me because they didn't see the beauty of the game, just that I was hard to beat. So I stopped playing, so I started playing smaller to be part of the game. People stopped playing with me when I was younger. So I'm scared that if I really do something amazing, I will be abandoned is what I'm hearing from that. This is phenomenal. The question was, how can I guide others without having ego? And the answer was, I am them. 
The way I guide myself is how I guide them. Give them space, love, be honest, be vulnerable, real. Listen to what their soul is asking you. Respond to their soul, not their ego. Beautiful. Kimberly had, my answer was forgiveness, but my heart cried out that I'm so very angry at God for allowing those things to have happened. I needed a protector, but now as an adult, I struggle to forgive the people from my past, but mostly God. Mm. Maybe, and, and if you still feel that dilemma, which I understand completely, Kimberly, there might be a follow-up question to that too. Chris, Christina has, be okay with the pain. Kat said, why do I self-sabotage? And the answer was, because you are not focused, too scattered, busy, but not productive. But make sure you give yourself credit for all that I do. Wow. This is so fascinating tonight. I like this tonight. It's kind of fun to do something different where I'm not just answering the questions. And I'm sorry we aren't getting to that because... Uh, I get to talk to so many of you in the comments tonight, and I want to do this exercise because I think it's so special. What's preventing me from finding a job that fulfills me and my purpose? And the answer is nothing is preventing you from finding a job fulfilling your purpose. Follow the funny. Ooh. Ah, this is so fun. My question was, what do I need to do ne uh, next, I'm assuming? It says, what do I need to do net? I'm assuming that's next. And, and as for a job, and the answer was, the vision was a blackbird trying to get out of a box and eventually it started looking like an eagle. Isn't this amazing? Isn't this amazing that so many of you are getting answers, right? So many of you are getting answers. Is that not exciting and the most scary thing ever to actually find a place that you have all the information? I mean, there's probably a part of our ego that's lonely that that means I don't have to ask everyone. I have every answer inside of me. Isn't that amazing, you guys? And had, why can't I get money? Uh, I'm on the wrong path and don't want to do it alone, scared and don't feel capable. Awesome. So, Anne, I would go, let's go one thing. I'm on the wrong path. Because, Anne, earlier you were the one that had all the questions, and right now you have five answers. So let's go to a consciousness that, that also is breaking this down. I am on the wrong path is big. Let's find out what that means. Maybe meditate on that. What's the right path could be a follow-up question. I don't want to do it alone. Maybe a question is, why don't I want to do it alone? Or is it true that I don't want to do it alone, right? Don't allow yourself to get too many things so that you can't hear and your heart can't feel each word that's being said. Every word matters. And we just say a ton of shit. Like we don't allow what's being heard to be heard. Um, Renee said, I wonder why I have a fear of success. And it took me back to when I was five and had extreme debilitating shyness. Wow. 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 Uh, Anne also has, wow, I feel abandoned when I have money and now I don't have money. And now when I don't have money, I feel abandoned. So you're not scared to make money and be abandoned because it happens either way, but you believed that, right? So just flipping through. I'm not meaning to skip anyone. I'm just kind of blowing through and looking for these. So this is amazing, right? I learned that my barricade to my heart was when I was a child and now I have stopped myself from receiving. I needed this so much. Awesome. So glad we did this. I missed this morning's call and the recording's not up yet. Oh, that's amazing. I have to learn to tear down those barricades. We just let, we just allow the, oh, it, I was reading one and then it, it skipped. Let's do a second question. Let's do another one. Nancy asked, why am I blocking my own path? The answer is no, just practice more, call on us, ask for help, step into it. Excellent. So are you guys ready for question number two? Let's do question number two. You guys should have four questions written down. If you have more questions come up, feel free to write them down, but we're just going to right now meditate on question two. Really give yourself the courage to do this work and receive an answer that's bigger than the consciousness that asked the question. Let's be patient. Let's be with ourselves. This is really, really, really big, you guys. So let's take a deep breath together and let's release it. Take another deep breath. 
release it. Denise says, I didn't get my answers, but it's okay. That might be a thing. It might go, I want you to get okay right now. That could be an answer. I want you to get okay with right now and not having an answer. In fact, the more you're okay with not having an answer, the more space you make for an answer to show up. The more you want something, the more it's gonna run from you because you don't have room to receive it. So if you're trying to grab something, it's gonna go away. But if you allow yourself to just become a satellite dish and receive what's true, receive it, it's very different than chasing. Receiving and chasing are the opposite. So we're not gonna chase the answer, we're gonna receive it when it feels like showing up because we're a safe space. And by the way, how many amazing things, how many people could be with you if you're a safe space, not you owe me space, right? How many things can be there? So look at your second question, take a deep breath, release it, and read your second question. And take a deep breath and release it. And then we're going to look at this question, take a deep breath, and ask it. And I don't care how big or little it is. It could be, why do I love ice cream so much? It's just what you want to ask. <sighs> Feel free to release it out loud or inside. Take another deep breath and release it. Take another deep breath. Ask the question again. And let's take one more deep breath and just ask the question again. And then set the timer for the same amount of time. And I'll see you in a few minutes again. And I might mute it because my daughter's running around talking. So I'll be back in a few minutes.
Take a deep breath in. Release it. Feel free to write on the paper an answer that came up. Go ahead and write it down. I'll give you a minute to write down whatever came up, what you're feeling. It doesn't matter what it is. They're all perfect. Write it all down. Ah. <sighs> Lucinda asked the question, what am I doing to limit myself right now? The answer she got was playing small, not just in one way, but as a way of being. The way you interact with others regularly, procrastination, self-doubt are all reflective of acting small and in insignificant. That is the biggest limitation right now. <clears throat> that is fantastic. You know what I asked it? I said, um, what do you need from me? And it said, I want you to care about whatever my answer is anytime you ask that question. In other words, what I heard was I have a habit of asking that question and it tells me what to do. And sometimes I do it, but often I don't. It's like, okay, good. I just feel good enough because I got the answer. And it said, I love you no matter what you do, but I just want you to know it's available for you to do really amazing things if you actually act on the answers that I give you. Isn't that amazing? So that was so exciting to me, right? <sighs> Isn't that amazing? Uh, just like life. Before we started, I noticed the part of me that was scared to get the answer, make meditation and connection a priority. Uh, how to create a thriving family, time, attention, love, time, attention, and love. I will just add to that, making time a bigger deal than money will help you to have both, but also have a quality life. Time is limited and money actually isn't. I understand you might perceive it as limited and we might have moved like it's limited, but we have to understand our time is actually limited. They've been printing money forever and it doesn't just go to Mars, right? But we move as if our money's limited, so it becomes that way because that's the consciousness we're at. Hoard it, don't move it, don't move forward and our purpose, don't shift into our highest, right? So. That's just something, your time is a big deal. And if this were your last day on earth, if tomorrow were, you would live it differently, right? So we want to live as if it's our last day, like in a full way. We want to live fully. You would have a mentality of like, I'm going to just do what is calling to the highest version of me to make the world better, right? <clears throat> so fantastic, fantastic uh, Gina says, why can't I stop eating? Why can I not stop eating sugar? Because I lack self-respect. And did it give you any opportunity to move through that, right? Jana says, I just asked the universe to surround me and my children to fill us with peace and love, even while their father continues waging attacks at us so we can be at peace inside. Beautiful. That's nice to just ask for that. And it would probably also say, receive it too. Oh, awesome. Kim Halsey. I love you so much. Kim says, where should I have the next retreat? The Great Smoky Mountains in Tennessee. Hell yeah. Beautiful. Phyllis had, why am I single after all of these years? And the answer was, do not judge your journey. Oh, what an answer. Stop judging why. Don't think you should be different. Beautiful. Marianne says, what if I let go of my expectations of others? The answer was freedom and happiness. Uh, and then part two was I wouldn't worry about their expectations of me. And their third one was I would be free to be in love with everybody. That's awesome. Amazing. Harold said, is it that I'm too content and happy with what I'm doing that I don't try harder to reach for something else? And then the answer was, start asking more for forgiveness than permission. 
You guys, this is so fun to hear your answers and questions. I'm having a blast with this because these are really a high consciousness group of answers. Like your answers are phenomenal, right? So why don't we do question three? And I'll do this a little bit actually shorter. And the reason is because you're in a position right now of a higher consciousness. So your receptivity is going to be even faster. And also to give you time to do this alone afterwards, because we have another question after that, right? So let's take in a deep breath. Now let's look at question three. Feel free to ask it out loud so you can get it stored in your system. <sighs> okay, I see it. Okay, now take a deep breath in and then ask the question, whether it's out loud or internally, ask the question. <sighs> take a deep breath in. Breathe out, ask the question. Take a deep breath in, ask the question. Let's go into meditation number three. This one will be shorter. Go ahead, I'm gonna mute it again and I'll be back in a few minutes. All right, take a deep breath in and release it. If you don't have an answer, feel free to listen a little longer. If you do, write it down. 
take a minute and write down the answer or whatever came up for number three, whatever it was, write it down. Hmm. Love this one that Renata said. How can I best serve the universe? By allowing yourself to indulge in your gifts more fully. You have been given them for a reason. What a great lesson for all of us. You've been given these gifts for a reason. Kim really says, well, this opened up a well. I only want to speak truth. So if I'm in unforgiveness and still searching, who am I to be leading others? And here's the other thing, Kimberly. You just forgiving is leading others, even if you don't tell anyone about it. You are leading the world when you forgive yourself. You are leading the world when you just do what you say. It's not only that you have to have a YouTube channel. You are leading when you are acting on your highest truth even if you don't tell anyone about it. They feel it, you're raising the bar of your consciousness, you're raising the bar of you, and you're making the world better. It's seen in ways you might not even see. Carolyn says, how do I have more confidence, clarity, and courage? And the answer was be willing to let my ego die and my soul shine. Beautiful. Stuart says, how do I remember to turn to love when confronted with a conflict or a challenge? What a great question. And then, oh, shoot, it, it, it adjusted. I can't find him now. Sorry, I lost it. Why do I resist to stillness? Answer is needed to always be watching out to protect myself. My inner child is hypervigilant. Wow. How do I relate to my parents or not? And the answer is their journey is different than yours. They don't get yours. Uh, then Rasputin Hart. <laughs> I don't even know if that's Rasputin. I realized I don't know what that is. But I also just think, are you saying, and then a random thing. How do I make a good, honorable, and lifted give, live? I'm sorry. How do I make a good, honorable, and gifted living? The answer is if you build it, they will come. Get the farm working have studio art sessions and natural workshops. Here's daylight. Should I continue to pursue a romantic relationship? The answer is no need. One is waiting for you because you are worthy. Just let it come to you. In the meantime, connect more deeply with yourself and God. Wow. Dottie had, how do I show myself more genuine love that I can receive? And the answer was, be that genuine love for yourself and others. Respect the silent energetic laws that show you what you deserve. Be willing to let others learn their own lessons. Be willing to show up for yourself as much as you show up for others, emotionally and energetically. That's so beautiful, Dottie. Edie asks, should I pressure my acting, should I pressure my acting career again? And the answer was, dream it and allow uh, spend more time in the desire of it, in the enjoyment process of it. Amazing. Yes. Yes, in the, in, in the enjoyment, in the process of it. How do I remember to turn to love when confronted with a conflict or challenge? The answer was begin each day with the intention to love what is in the now and reaffirm that intention throughout the day. These are amazing. And I want you guys to take in that you are finding your own answers. You are finding your O's, your own answer. What, what do I choose, A or B? The answer is, was, what does it uh, answer? Was it, what is it does not matter. You will evolve and grow in both. Take the leap and have the fear being and seeing the possibilities and doing both. 
what's uh, what's wrong with me was the question. I felt a younger part of me that was really angry and had her fist clenched. Uh, okay, this one was, why do I keep thinking of my ex? And the answer is you don't. That turned into the question of why do I keep replaying the relationship in my head? And then it was because you didn't listen to intuition. Wow. So just by listening to intuition, you won't replay patterns, right? Virginia says, this is amazing. I never thought about going into meditation with a question. And I love that. It's pretty special, isn't it? Nancy asks, what do I do next to help the universe and the earth? And the answer was pray for peace and send love to all. And I believe from that state, you will be shocked at how much peace you feel in yourself. And that's the only thing we have control of is how much peace we feel in ourself, right? So it's wanting you to feel that. It's wanting you to, that's what I'm hearing at least. Jake asked, do I need to move as soon as possible to a location where I have as much undisturbed space as possible to meditate and go inward, such as a place in India? The answers are clean where you are. You are not the shit. <laughs> that is what is passing through. Clean inside the body and the inner space. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. How do I be seen? Answer, get quieter and be still. What a gift these answers are, you guys. <sighs> is, and Juliet says something interesting, and that's such a good point. Juliet says, is anyone noticing that all the answers work for you too? That's because at the highest level, we're all the same. And the more we do this work, the more we tune into the same channel together that the highest you wants to do what it can to raise the consciousness of the planet. And the more you do this work, you'll see we are all the same person. If This morning, the same thing happened. At an hour, people were starting to get the same thing. Like one guy had an insight, the same second someone else typed in the insight for him, and that insight he hadn't had for a week, it came the same second, right? So, so I wanna offer you the idea that you're tuning to a consciousness that weirdly seems to be true for a lot of people. Why is that? Because we're all the same. And when I say we're all the same, I mean you are everyone you seem to have a problem with. That's We forget that we're that person, right? America is Iran. You are Trump. You are Obama. You are whoever you think you have a problem with whoever it is. And we are the same. And the more we raise our vibration, the more we will be connecting on the exact same thing. What brings inner peace? What is inner peace? How do I enact it in myself and I receive it? Now there's a fourth question, but I'm going to offer you to have an intimate moment with yourself and do it without me. The fourth question is who am I? And my dare to you after this call is to give yourself a good chunk of time to listen for a while. And I want you to do it without me so that you're not in the vibration of like checking and how long and do I get the right thing. I want you to take the time that you need to take for yourself and really allow yourself to feel the joy of learning the answer and let it come at its pace and don't be in such a hurry to get it and let it come in. And it might come in with a word like you are the space, you are love, you are that person you're mad at, whatever, it might come in a feeling. I asked it this morning and it just like blew me into particles. Like it showed me that I'm like sand, that my body is not actually even like this clump of connected energy, that it's just space and particles. It started like turning me into like a screen kind of, right? That's what I am right now. I'm just, I'm just this air particles all over the place. That's what it showed me in my meditation. So I wanna offer you to go get your own answer and really take the time to breathe in and breathe out and ask the question, who am I? And I'm going to give you the space to do that without me, okay? And I'm not even going to, I'm going to just say thank you to all of you because you're in a vibration right now where I don't even want to like thank you name by name by name. I want you to stay in this vibration, stay open and allow yourself to listen for a while. Don't be interrupted. Put your phone on airplane mode, set a timer for a longer chunk of time. Go 15 minutes, go 20 minutes. And when you're done, take a deep breath and write down some answers. And then let's talk next week. 
And let's see how you feel when you start to follow these things. And I want to offer you also, as you ask questions, instead of just asking them and throwing them out, and why do I always do this? Write them down. Let them sit there. Let them be meditated on. Let them be pondered on. Let an answer actually show up. You will change your life by doing this. So know that I love you. Know that I'm honored to be with you. And know that I know that you're me. So I'm honored to be with you. And everyone who's on here is also you. So thank you for being with me tonight. Take a deep breath in. Release it. And ask that question out loud three times. Who am I? And I'll see you next week. Take care, everybody.